What is up? Welcome to the next episode. This is going to be the Junk Drawer Show, episode 43. Title in progress. By the time it's posted, you'll see the title and I'll, I'll come up with one. Um, but it's about D&D. So it is currently, I don't have my watch on, February 22nd, I think. And about a week ago, we recorded a podcast to just talk about where the campaign has gone, where it's at now, what we've enjoyed about it, and just general, you know, shooting the shit. Um, We took a break for most of February, maybe all of February, um, because for various reasons, people couldn't make it. So, you know, work, travel, family, um, and, you know, a little bit of burnout, not because it's not fun, but it is a lot of planning for Justin, our, our dungeon master. So everyone got a nice break. He's actually with me now. Um, well, not physically. He's in the house. But yeah, that, that's what we did. We, we talked about those things. And um, we're currently on episode 51 going into episode 52. And it's going well. So we all got cigars and had a couple drinks and we're just sitting around outside, socially distancing, of course. And, you know, it was nice. It was good hanging out. Um, If you do not watch our streams, we stream every Tuesday at, is it 8.30? 8.30 Eastern, 6.30 Mountain time. Um... It's good. It's very role play heavy. So if you're into that, that's what you're getting into. We are in the middle of a, a city siege. Um, a city we're trying to defend is being sieged. So if you like combat, combat's also happening. Um, I just got a wyvern, a little pet wyvern. And by little, I mean fucking huge. So I think we're going to have some Ash Charizard type uh, interactions going on, which I'm pretty pumped for. So I think that can be pretty funny. Um, yeah, that's that's where we're at. There's really not much more to say. Uh, hopefully, I will have had... Well, Carlos couldn't be there. Uh, he was the only one who wasn't in town. He was supposed to be. But then last minute, he's like, you know what, Josh? I don't really like you very much, so I'm going to dip. So he dipped. Um, and well, I said, well, you know what? Um Even though you hate me, I'm still going to try to keep you involved. So we made up a list of questions that we went over in the podcast with each other and sent it to him to do a little recording or video. Not sure which one it's going to be um, at the time of recording this intro, but hopefully those will be spliced in with the general conversation just to, you know, make sure he's included because stock's a very important part of the campaign. Uh... Well, I'm just going to let it go because I'm going to keep rambling and I really should be working. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I should be coding. I don't really want to code right now. I'm very tired of sitting down and sitting down for like six hours, eight hours at a time is rough. So, uh, yeah, you don't want to listen to this. Okay, well, just enjoy the Junk Drawer Show podcast episode 43 some conversation about Dungeons and Dragons and Junk Drawer. Yeah, go get get a little. Oh, well, it already started, so. Fuck, let's refresh. (laughs) Do you want more of that? Um, yeah, I'll do another one. Okay. You know, grab it? Yeah. Well, I have the the, the tab open. Oh, true. Don't talk about me when I leave. (laughs) Okay, we definitely won't. Justin's a big fat cunt. Yeah, let's start talking shit about him. I yeah. hope they don't say anything mean. We're all best friends. <laughs> and they would never hurt Justin. <laughs> so you go away. Justin's so the one we're voting shit. out of the group, right? Yeah, yeah. He's the worst okay. DM I've ever had. Yeah. You guys are my best friends. <laughs> Dude, my uh, my roommate, so he plays D&D also. Mm. Um, and they just finished their campaign. So they did a uh, like a couple one-shots mm. at level 20. So we just got to make a bunch of level 20 ones. The things he, the, the characters he made were so broken. It was amazing. I love. He that. did like, it wasn't a tabaxi. It was one that could fly. Oh, an Eric, an Eric Krokra. Yeah, Eric Krokra monk with like feats that can make him go super fast. Because it was a battle royale, 
so he wanted to like just fuck the whole thing up and then it died in like the 15th (laughs) minute so he just played a level 20 sorcerer which was also really cool thank you you're welcome we didn't say anything bad about you i believe you (laughs) (laughs) it's funny that he lied to your face i know what what i'm a little i said you have eyes on your face you that sh- is true. You should start wearing more lace. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like a sexual thing? I hope this doesn't awaken anything. In <laughs> this better not awaken anything. And then next thing you know, there are two Dalmatians at one party. <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't play it for this. I didn't think you would show up. <laughs> and uh, Jesus we're, we're friends with the Dean. Uh, which scene are the babies in? No, we're just here. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, Dina Lina Ling. <laughs> Dina Lynn. Oh. I Thank think you, sir. No one else has seen season six of Community but me. Fuck have no, they? I don't want to watch that shit. Have you what? watched season yeah, six? Yeah, I've seen the whole thing like ten times. I think my favorite is still, uh, one of my favorites for season six is Jeff going like, yeah, Dean, and you didn't put on one stupid outfit the whole uh, semester. And he goes, I'll be right back. And then he puts <laughs> all the <Yeah>. costumes on. <laughs> They'll say I'm a bad Dean. Uh, cheers, boys. Cheers. cheers. cheers gentlemen. To Carlos. To, to Carlos. Carlos. May, to, may God have him. <laughs> well, this one's better now. Oh, yeah? Because he put the lemon around the actual rim of it. He didn't do that the last time. Oh, he rimmed you. He, yeah, give me rimmed up. Hot. Nice touch. Nice touch. It's like pledge, you know? <laughs> it's like it's like Carlos is here. <laughs> <laughs> He's here with us in spirit and sexuality. <laughs> the same thing. God came to another angel. He's not dead. It's just, <laughs> you know. He just... He, uh, Carlos converted. Anytime, <laughs> anytime I think about that, I think of Mike's former employer, Zach, when we went out to <laughs> TGI Fridays, and this was before his passing of the passing of Hank Aaron, and he was like, "Number forty-four, Hank Aaron, rest in peace. You're still alive." <laughs> <laughs> Not dead yet. No, not dead yet. Not nope. dead yet. I thought but you were going to say Zach died. But nope. he know. I was going to say, this is dark. Why are they giggling? <laughs> no, Hank Aaron He's dead. passed away recently. I, I do know that. Very recently. Henry Aaron. Yeah, it was like two weeks ago. Um, what's up, guys? Can you help me again? So we are, oh. um, we're here hanging out. We're having some cigars. Some libations. The boys are, the boys are hanging out. Um, Josh is in from Colorado, and I finally... I'm Keep in the spinning. state at the same time as him. Keep spinning. So uh, can... it's me, Pat. Uh, Mike is here. Justin also here, and obviously one Joshua Delgado. Hello. It's his birth name. I know you. <laughs> I know me too. His social security number is one one two 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 one one two two. Pat, no. <laughs> I hope you have life lock, buddy. It's out I there. don't. All senior citizens should have life alerts. <laughs> I have life alert. Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. As a 30-year-old man, can't attest. <laughs> life alert really does help. Maybe. I've fallen in the shower at least twice. I mean, hey, man, it's your money. Using you and you. I need mean... It, <laughs> is that a Porta earring? Guys, a Porta earring? He keeps it is a button. Porta earring. Nice. I, I, don't, I don't answer. <laughs> <it. laughs> I'm like, Pat. <laughs> I keep waking up with all these bruises on me. <laughs> I'm like a banana. Yeah, he punches you in your sleep. He's not you and Don. <laughs> <laughs> I told Pat the other day about that. I'm like, my favorite Josh story is that, like, one time when we are in high school, he's like, man, I can't stand Donovan. Because Donovan wasn't a person for a while. Yeah, he was, he was a just jabroni. just like a little shit. He was a jabroni. He was a jabroni. Yeah. He was a and brony. So, <laughs> and so brony. Josh didn't know how to, like, express that healthy. <laughs> like, because no one, like, everyone loved Donovan. He was that the favorite. Wasn't Josh. He was the favorite. <laughs> and so Josh used to go into Donovan's room when he was sleeping. And he would just punch him really hard in the arm. And at one point, Donovan woke up and he said, what's going on? And Josh went, you're sleeping. Go back to sleep. And he goes, oh, okay. I only did it a handful of times. That's a lie. That's why we say, fuck you, Donovan. Fuck you, Donovan. And Donovan's like, why I've do I have done this? it dozens of times. <laughs> the doctor said it was a birthmark. But this is a giant bruise. <laughs> I bruised bone. I don't know if I've told him that story yet. Well, he's going to learn it now. I hope he listens uh, to this podcast. Welcome to the podcast, buddy. <laughs> hey, now you're part of the brotherhood. You got uh, hit by Josh. <laughs> I've uh, never been hit by Josh. Oh, now I have. Yeah, I went really soft because it's your bad shoulder. That's fair. Also, uh, he's got that sleeve on, so it just blocks it. Oh, okay. That's not how that works. He's kind of like a T-1000. <laughs> Let me use my left hand so it feels like a child hitting you. Baby punch. <laughs> 
Spider Kiss? <laughs> Spider Kiss? Hier ist Arcano. Arcano. Uh, yeah, I want to see Brody Brody in Calderon. Calderon. <laughs> Have you seen that video of him from like the 80s or 90s where he's he's smoking a cigar? Yeah. And he's like, you're Fuck a little you. punk. My stogie. I st because you're a little bitch. I smoke my stogie wherever I want. I, smoke I don't have to I ask anyone house. like you. <laughs> you see that video of him recently where he's doing the same thing, only he's got like a pet donkey that he keeps inside of his house? No. <laughs> Can you pull that up, Jamie? <laughs> Jamie? <laughs> it's not Joe Rogan. <laughs> he's our Jamie. No, I'm not. Hi, yeah, you're awesome. Jamie now. Put some respect on my name. I did, Jamie. Jamie he's better than you. Buckets of money. He moved to Austin for his job, so he's he's making pay. Can I be Artie Lang? <laughs> yeah, you can oh, be Artie that's Lang. that's Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> you can still be Artie Lang. So I'd like to start off by saying Francis Ngannou is going to beat Stipe Miocic. I just want to start Ooh. with that. I think so, too. Yeah, fighting stuff. I am undecided because Francis has not gone more than a minute and 10 seconds in a fight. So I don't know. I haven't, and I think Stipe has a pretty solid chin. I don't know if it's uh, um, Ngannou strong, but. My thing is, I don't know if anybody's. Motorcycle. Got an Ngannou strong chin. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if that exists. Stipe ate some, but I think he got I think he got hurt pretty bad in the last fight. Which That's is why true. I think DC knocked him out with a... Oh, that little slip? Yeah, that, that slip and rip. Was that his last fight? Uh, no, because he fought DC after that and got the belt back. And I poked the oh, shit out of right. DC. Well, an eye for an eye. Yeah, that's true. He's a good Christian man. God-fearing man. David and Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> want to talk Tom about and a, Jerry. Want to talk about a David and Goliath story. Go on. GameStop. <laughs> GameStop in that? I do. I lost a thousand dollars. Let's call it GameStop. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. I bought. Josh, no. I bought it. It's okay. I you made it back it in crypto. I bought it at like three. My yeah. My at my average cost was three twenty, and I have five shares. Mm -hmm. And I and I couldn't. I couldn't buy any more. And then they, they just you know it all started yeah. crashing. Yeah. Well, if, if I'm finding out about it on on like popular Reddit, it's it's too late. I should have learned that in the 2017 crypto market. I did not. <laughs> but I learned it again. I and did. I'm going to learn it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always never stop learning, Josh. Never stop learning. See, yeah, that's why I played the small game with it. And I just bought AMC, but I only bought like five shares of AMC when it was like $13. And I think I sold it when I was like seven. So like I still lost a lot of money in comparison, but not as much as you did. So yeah. <laughs> I'm more of a Movico guy. <laughs> Look, you don't lose the money until you sell. And I haven't sold yet. So, hold the line. Hold so the you're line. still in that fucking game, baby. Go to still the moon. Game. I figured. So, <laughs> Go to the moon. So now, because the initial plan failed, it's now a midterm, a mid-length uh, play. Because I do think GameStop is going to GameStop is going to do pretty well. GameStop. Say because it's GameStop. GameStop will do pretty well because they just acquired. I believe it's the Babbages. No, 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 no. Uh, I think it would no. It's some C level people. It's like some uh, a business development for from Amazon, I think, and they're shifting to a digital first model. So I think they have a chance. I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna make my money back. No. But you know, I have lose it. less money. Lose less money. <laughs> Which is the goal. Yeah, just to lose less money. Speaking yeah, of losing less games, money, you know, <laughs> D and D. I know that game. You sure do, Justin. So I <laughs> I want to start by asking. Justin a question. That's me. That's not related to the campaign in a in a character aspect. Oh. Go on. What has happened in this campaign so far that you were that kind of caught you off guard? Oh. Um, At least recently. Recently. Because um, I know I ask you this question just about every time we do a D D podcast, but it's because this game is so freeform when our writers let us improvise. Yeah, it's, it's nice that they let us do that. Do. The, the writing room is fantastic, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't get enough credit for, you know, I'm just do. the vessel. You know, um, thing that took me off guard, I think I think everyone had a moment. There, there most certainly has to have been, uh, I would say with Donner starting to rallying uh, the troops, trying to get more of a, a following. Uh, I think has definitely taken me like a back because I didn't really think of that aspect to an extent. Um, everything is fleshed out in my head and 
there are, I do have a lot of things written down and I think I was telling you this a little bit earlier today. I'm very nervous about getting to Alder's town because that's kind of what I've had in my head so far. And I don't know how much I have in my head for that. So uh, I would say for Donner, it's been the, after the revelation of Thor, the Yarnbjorn and the trying to get uh, followers has been interesting for me to watch. Uh, I would say for Alder, personally letting Aya go, because Aya, I felt, was a place of familiarity and comfort for Alder, mm -hmm. if that's fair. Yeah. Um, and it was very surprising to me when you were like, yo, you need to go talk to my mom. And I'm like, he's the bird's not going to stay on the boat? What? And you're like, <laughs> bird uh, boat. like a beast master. You just let let her fly man and you kind of coming into your own also the whole head shaving thing oh yeah uh, came out of nowhere for me Two because seven britney man well free britney free britney free yo britney. fuck free justin britney. timberlake am i right Probably. his apology was terrible it was not good it was not great no. i uh, have not paid attention to any of them don't worry we'll, we'll watch we'll it on later okay um but no i think him shaving his head the symbolism of uh, getting his, you know, his family's metal down to a kind of blade and the symbolism with that and shedding his old life. And I thought that was really cool. The whole reveal between, uh, for Loki. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was fun. Well, we, we weren't, we weren't going to do it so early. Mm -hmm. Like in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't going to be as early. But... <clears throat> considering how everything kind of like started resulting and moving and flowing and ebbing, uh, it made sense for the reveal to happen when you got to Valoria. Because our original plan was going to be post Valoria. Yeah. Was going to be the Loki reveal, which in retrospect, depending on how Valoria goes, because I have a few ideas, <laughs> it kind of would have been like a kick while you're down. Mm -hmm. Like a kick in the nuts. Like, not only did you get this big revelation of all the things that are happening in Valoria with Asgard and all of this. Loki's been here the whole fucking time. Like, yeah. I feel like that would have been worse. Yeah. It wouldn't have gone great. Um, and then I think anything with Carlos, anything with him talking back and pulling rank on Sue has been really fun for me. <laughs> because... Carlos is still Carlos's thought. So he's like, I'm the captain and you need to listen to me. And he built this very strong, uh, very... Rosa Diaz. He, it's oh, Rosa Diaz. Yep. I see it now. Is it better? Oh, oh no. Yeah, I'm talking, Sue yeah. is Rosa Diaz. Yeah, now that you Sue, say it, I see it. Sue has always been Rosa Diaz for me. Mm -hmm. He was just like, yeah, she's just, you know, she's stern. She puts me in my place. And I'm like, oh, Rosa Diaz. She just needs a fucking jacket. And it's like, okay, great story, man. Yeah. So that's kind of what that influence is. I will kill everyone in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Him hold, her holding talk. I will kill everyone in this room. Um, I think the most recent revelation, because I, it's interesting now to watch uh, Pat's reaction in real time. Because mm -hmm. before I would all have to gauge a reaction on Roll20. And sometimes it's fun. And sometimes I miss things. I think the revelation that uh, Creed and Sue had a thing before, and there's just been a whole lot of like bickering back and forth, looking at Pat going, oh, oh, oh <laughs> as, was really fun for me. Um, I'm trying to think like what else. There's just, there's so much. There's to, so much. There's a lot to unravel. Yeah. I mean, think about where we were in Strahd. At this point, mm -hmm. we were done. We were almost done. We were almost done. Also, real quick for context, this is after episode 51. Right. And so, also for context, we're at a bar right now. So if it's loud and there's background noise, that's why. I'm going to filter some of it out. All right, well, let's still let I, the they boys be, able be to figure boys, it out. Right? <clears throat> um, like that Onyx song. So I don't remember what I was saying. Sorry. Sorry, dude. No, you're Onyx. good. Um, it, for context, fun. where we were with Strahd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. So for context, where we were with Strahd. We are so far from the end uh -huh. based on <clears throat> conversations I've had with Justin and, like, we're kind of sort of basically at the halfway point. Kind of. And we're a couple, we're Wait. a year, over a year in. Yeah. Yeah, when we, we first started in November of 2019, right? Yeah, I yeah. believe so. 
and we have now gone up three levels. <laughs> like, yeah. No, four. It's a slow burn. It's a slow right? burn. No, we, we started at 10. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, 11, yeah. 12, 13, Sorry, guys. Which, by the way, we'll roll stats for that at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Hit points. Whoop, whoop. Um, Level seven spells. Whoop, whoop. Gang, gang. So it's, it's very interesting to see the dynamic we're at now. And I... I just feel like this party meshes more than our last party did. I don't know if that's because we've gotten more uh, accustomed to playing the game, or if it's we built it that way, or if it's just kind of our own friendships kind of bleeding in. I think it feels more natural this time around because of the fact that we already understand game mechanics. So definitely makes it easier, whereas last time I feel like anytime we were working on stuff we were kind of pausing so because we didn't know what we were doing right but like now now we get it you know that was that's one of the coolest things like looking back on Strahd and like watching the first episode where you can literally see Josh's brain just be like nah man I don't have but I figured you wanted to probably do that can I grab that one too yeah Oh, oh, thank you. Cool, thank you. No, thanks. Appreciate you. Literally Very seeing well. Josh's brain as we're trying to figure, like, as he's trying to figure out mechanics in the first episode. And I was like, nah, man, fuck it. Let's just do it live. And slowly watching us hit our stride, slowly watching us to the point where, like, now when I'm building a character, when I built Thor, Justin and I still customize pieces of that mm -hmm. based on different you know, I want this spell. I want something different. I want, can we make this? Can we create that? And it's really added another level to mm -hmm. what we're able to do because, like Mike said, I think we understand the mechanics better. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it makes it more fun to play that character. I agree. Uh, and I, I think also we grew as players and we grew as people too. Yeah. Like I know I, I've said this before, but we're in much better and more stable places than we were when we started the first campaign. That is true. Agreed. So true. I think it's much easier for us to relax and just like lean into whatever the characters that we have are. Yeah, I mean, personal lives. Justin and I, when we started the last campaign, were in very bad spots. You were in a really I rough spot. I was in a really rough spot. I was also in a really rough spot. We were all in bad, bad head spaces. Yeah. And yeah, and you were debatably the most best off. And that's not saying much. <laughs> that, that's sad. <laughs> yeah, but, we were scraping. Yeah. But it was... And it, it's really cool that, that something as simple as a game brought us all together like that. And now to get to see us flourish. And, you know, I got married in the last year. And, you know, some of us have purchased houses and made moves and done this and added to the family and doing all these things like... It's it's really crazy, and I think that that comes across in gameplay, and I think we're able to evoke emotion a little better too as a character. Yeah. You know, I don't feel as dependent on like, oh, Donna needs to be sad, so I'm sad. Like I can make that that disconnect where Josh can be an asshole to me, and I'm not like, fuck Josh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whereas also, the first time I was like, fuck Josh. <laughs> Are we actually fighting? <laughs> yeah, I think like almost something that kind of helps with that, and this is like just kind of a little bit of a callback is. Like, honestly, looking at the way that Strahd ended, mm -hmm. we learned how emotional the game can get, and we really let that kind of carry us into the new campaign. Fucking tears, the last game. Yeah, like, yeah. legitimately, the end of the campaign, I cried over a fake brother that was a dog. <laughs> yeah. What was the dog's name? His name was Finn. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Never Vin, forget. as in Vin Diesel. Well, yeah. okay, so I'm gonna pose this, I'm gonna pose this here, right now, unprompted. Last final session we do a, a marathon stretch we like fucking rent hotel rooms and we crash somewhere let's go somewhere because hopefully we'll be in a post-covid world yeah let's all get hotel rooms somewhere like rent out a fucking conference room and do it live together oh 100 percent. yep yeah yeah i even want to do that at like i told justin like originally the the loki reveal was going to be spoilers the uh was going to be in person so I wanted to be able to fly down here and, and like have a whole thing happen. But yeah. Like Justin said, just the way that it happened, we couldn't we couldn't do that. But I think I think that's a, a wonderful idea. Oh, I, sure. I just think it would be so much. It's the fact that the last time we ended a campaign, and I, again, we're not close to being done this campaign. We have at least another what eighteen months in this campaign, probably. And I, I just think the tears that were shut at the table, the feelings, the emotion, getting to see each other, like having battle maps like that shit is so lost on on what roll we do 20. now and i love roll 20 and, and please sponsor us roll 20 but i love roll 20 
But, <laughs> look at <laughs> For context, Pat bitched about Roll20 for the first, like, 37 episodes. Can, can... First We're on of all, 51. The only, <laughs> the only reason I bitched about it is because I love playing in person. Yeah, We I, understand that. I, I, it's always better that way. I <laughs> love... Because then I got to spend time with my friends, too. But, yes, I bitched about Roll20, and we love you, Roll20, because you let us do this. But I think, I think our last sessions need to be in person for sure yeah yeah and like, i think we should go somewhere and like yeah I, I think it'd be dope to just get yeah we'll get an airbnb for a full house i mean there's five of us it's yeah. not gonna be that expensive yeah. and then just you know i mean we should go somewhere random yeah new mexico you keep pitching new mexico 30 percent back okay <clears throat> Regardless. So, question for Josh. <clears throat> What's it like being a tall 5'2", five, 5'3"? Five, <laughs> <laughs> He's a uh, lean, tall, long 5'2", five, 5'4". Five, five, uh, <laughs> I actually wanted to piggyback off of that. So... Very early on with... But no, really, what's it like? What's it, yeah, what's it like? Because I'm only 5'6", so I feel like... And I'm husky. Napoleon um, complex. <laughs> so, everything for this campaign specifically... Everything that you wanted to do and wanted to put into your character was done in that... I did character interviews. Session zero. So it wasn't even session zero because we had a session zero. Session negative one. We yeah. had character interviews where I sat with each one of our players and I sat for three hours was the maximum. And then I want to say two hours was the minimum I did. It was a while each time. Yes, because I wanted to get everything down. It was an because. <clears throat> Because this was different from Strahd, where, you know, I'm Absidy, I'm Shark, I'm Rufio. Yeah. Ruf we were memes. We started as memes. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> My character so, literally a <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I wanted to kind of ask, because we, we have two gods in the party. I wanted to kind of gauge one, Pat, where you wanted to come from, where you're like... I, I did what I did with Rufio and I want to move in a different direction and then I need Josh to piggyback off of that because your kind of decision went with like it, it ebbed with with Pat's yeah uh, so I my issue with Rufio is I wanted to make a more amenable character this time uh, and not as big of a, an asshole and I do still get to play actually Justin threw together for my wife and I, we did a, a one shot where I got to play young Thor and he was an asshole and that was fun. But I, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to play a lawful good character by the book and kind of just do lawful good things. Um, and I want to say the thing that had the biggest effect on me was uh, Endgame. Seeing Avengers Endgame and... Um, the way that people reacted to Fat Thor <laughs> um, made me mad because, like, I can totally understand that that mindset, that mindset that he was in, which is straight depression. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make a character <clears throat> because of that, and and a character that's somehow dealing with a lot of grief, but strong in spite of it. Whereas Rufio kind of fed into the grief and let it fuel him. So I just wanted to kind of change the mold a little bit. And because Endgame had such a big effect on me, I was like, cool, Thor, let's do it. So what, what's it, what exactly is the question? Is it what did we want to get out of the character? No, it was so because it's a very big, I would say in general, I, I have a rule of thumb that I got from my original uh, GM, uh, Shane. Never say no to the to the player character. Okay. So I wanted to kind of figure out, Pat, where you, you could have played a Thor-like character. You could have played like a cleric of Thor or a paladin of Thor, but you came to me specifically and said, no, I want to play Thor. I want to play the Pantheon. In this universe, how can we do it? Like, where did you go from, like, where you could have gone with Rufio, where he was the, you know, paladin of vengeance. He was essentially Batman. Yeah. And you decided to, I don't want to just play, you know, with the gods. I want to be a god. I, I, I guess I was just inspired by, like I said, Endgame was a big, big proponent. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to play a character that, that had been through shit. And I, I wanted to play a character that had been, been through shit that, like, it doesn't, it's a, it's a, it's a story that doesn't get told. 
you know, like in mythology, they touch on gods having scuffles and issues and whatever, but they never tell the, the, the bad parts about being a god. They never tell the hard stuff. They're just like, yeah, all powerful, live forever, it's great. Um, and I was really motivated to tell that story and that kind of story for my character um, because we've pulled from some Marvel comic lore. We've yep. pulled from, you and I have both read multiple Norse mythology books and pulled in stuff from there. And <clears throat> um, so I, we, you know, this is very much a, a character that we've built and sewn together from what we like in different places. Agreed. And I was interested to tell that story. Okay. And so piggybacking off of that, you made a very conscious decision that you, well, I remember originally we had kind of like, you were up in the air. You didn't know if you wanted to play Dremel full time or if you wanted to play Loki. Yeah. Because when, so when, when Pat first mentioned playing Thor, I remember telling Justin, Hey, I want to play Loki because I, I knew you wanted it to be a surprise. So I thought, what an even better, not better, but like a wham bam surprise to like find out that your brother was with you the whole time. Because then everyone else would have had a surprise and then you wouldn't have got a surprise. I'm like, oh, Pat needs a surprise. <laughs> I also thought it would have been like real funny. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to do it. Yeah. It was real funny. Um, and also it, it helped me kind of uh, define a character Wait. because, yeah. Uh, because I I don't really enjoy coming up with the depths of a character before the campaign. I like discovering the character throughout the campaign. So like finding that voice, finding the voice, and finding the personality too. Because Absidy started as just like, oh, oh I I'm trying to make money and I sell mattresses or whatever, whatever he did. God, and he was so deep at the end. Yeah, he had <laughs> so many layers. He got so heavy toward the end, and and that's kind of Irina, Irina, and with with uh, Thor slash Dremel. It gave me a way, a kind of like a, it gave me some constrictions to work within. So having Justin give me the motivation of Thor, I could then build upon that as, as Dremel. And, uh, you mean Loki or? Or as, yeah, you gave me the motivations yeah. and stuff of what Loki, like why he would be doing something. Yeah. And then I could build and put my own flourishes on it. So Dremel was just, the original idea that I was going to do for you or to not for, for Pat <clears throat> as Dremel was going to be like everything Thor was but better but it was all it was all going to be fake so you know, he was going to be more confident stronger faster everything and then find out that it was Loki and he was just playing the whole time was the original thought and then for whatever reason he turned into a hippie for, I don't know. What I wonder it why. <laughs> Could it be Colorado? I don't know. You came in in a green mist when you boarded bore, uh, the plane. It was like the saw dude meme. Where it's like, oh. Saw dude. Saw. saw. Mm, for well, saw. really, I, I don't. I don't know why <laughs> I, I did this. it. And so when when we started, I knew I wanted to make him more more earthy because he was um, a furbolg, which is a you know a nature giant kind of. It's a half thing. giant. It's a half giant, mm -hmm. but he's also you know very nature. A fey giant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He likes to watch people fuck. Yeah. Well, that that, like that was also something like I don't know where that came from. <laughs> right, Josh. <laughs> right. I don't like. I was that. watching a lot of porn. <laughs> it's like so, I don't this messy. I don't want to do this. Yeah. So I don't I don't know why I said it, but once I did, I, I'm like, okay, this is my character now. So I started going in that direction and mm -hmm. and. Uh, then it, it built out really well is like this is Loki trying to overcompensate for containing his rage and sadness um, and then probably around I think it was like episode 20 it was it was right after um, Little Adults yeah that was when I was like oh shit I really like Dremel as a character <laughs> but I really wanted to do the reveal too so I, I knew at some point it was going to come to an end um, so I, I don't know if I answered the question no you did um, I would will say... you bring Dremel back Will Dremel be a character there, for you? Mm. <laughs> I would I would like to play Dremel as something at yeah. some point. Because he's he's a lot of fun. I think uh, what's important is with the with the Loki, uh, so I made Thor or we made Thor in September. Yeah. And Josh was very on the fence until about October. And there was a moment where I said, Look, man, you have to let me know if you're going in as Loki, you have to go all in because I have a lot of stuff I need to tell you. Yeah. And so at one point, Josh was just like, I'm in. So there was at least 40 minutes of me saying, this is what's happened <laughs> for the past nine centuries that Thor's been gone. So 
we we broke down uh, what happened to Asgard after Thor left, what Loki's life was like. All things Thor still doesn't know. Yeah. Because we what was had time. What was Loki's life uh, post-Thor? What happened post-Talos? And then what happened post-Incursion? Um, and then also what Josh didn't mention is Loki is entirely his character. There isn't a, a section where I've been like, all right, you need to reel it back, dude. Like, that's not Loki. This isn't that. Dremel is Loki. Dremel, Josh playing Dremel is 110% how I have seen Loki in every aspect. And I think I reiterated that because we... Oh. oh. Um, I think I reiterated that because we, we talked, I want to say, the hour before the reveal. Like, before the session. Mm, yeah. Josh was very nervous. I was super nervous. He's like, fuck, fuck, fuck. I'm Hence like, the this... five, two, five, four. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm like, ah, oh, buddy. But I, I think I reiterated and I drove home. I'm like, Josh, this is your character. This is not a character that I'm dictating... Because you were saying, like, you're worrying about a whole personality change. And I'm like, Loki's the same character that you've been playing this in t- for, what, 50 episodes, 49 episodes? Yeah. Just a different accent. It's literally a different accent. Like, you know, dampening things with drugs, I can totally see someone with PTSD who's been through the shit that your character has been through doing. Mm-hmm. So, it just... I'm... Like I said wholeheartedly it's it's your character and yeah. i think i think you guys all of you guys have done a tremendous job with making three-dimensional characters as opposed to before where we found those three dimensions yeah so and i want to real quick on that the on the the drug dampening thing that that is how it was up until uh captain creed yeah. the the drug session with captain creed was meant to be from from Loki's perspective was just going to be another fun thing for him to like push down his emotions but that that's where he switched it from drugs being this way to uh, push things down to not have to deal with them mm-hmm. to then be able to deal with them as like a like a forced healing sort of thing which I don't know if that's come across or if I've done anything with it yet but that's that's the intention is that now yeah. this thing that used to be a crutch is now a Propulsion? I don't know. It's it's a catalyst. A, a, yeah. motiv- a motivation. Yeah. Um, so I want to backpack off of that real quick and talk to maybe the person that had the biggest character switch from campaign one to campaign two. <laughs> um, what? So Mike, yeah. what about playing Alder has surprised you? And what are you, without giving anything away, what are you excited for to to do with Alder? First off, guys, I, like, originally didn't, like, believe, like, I, I watch a lot of stuff on, like, YouTube and what whatnot, like, trying to research different things, and when it came mm-hmm. to figuring out what I wanted to do, like, there's even a guy on YouTube who, um, he did it more recently, but he actually did, like, a video on the Druid Circle that I am and why he loves it so much and why it's his favorite and whatnot, um... But there's another video that was out there uh, of a YouTube channel, and I'll, you know, I know you guys love our recommendations so much, but it's XP to level three. Yeah, yeah. And XP to level three. He did a video on like breaking down a druid, and he like repeats throughout it the, the entire time a new player should never play a druid because playing a druid is the hardest fucking class in the game. Agreed. And. There's so many different mechanics to playing a druid that it's no bullshit. Like, there's so much shit that druids can do when it comes to spell casting. Like, once you hit, like, level 19 druid, like, none of that matters. Like, <laughs> level 19 druid, like, you can literally, if, if it's not consumed by the spell, you can cast every spell without material components. Oh, shit. Like... And when it comes to level 20, you can cast spells in beast shape. Like, <laughs> you can literally do everything. <laughs> but awesome. Broken. Exactly. It, it is. is broken to a certain point. I, can, I, I hope that Alder gets to get to that point. Um, because broken. I know that Justin's got plans for us, and that's not necessarily likely. But We in a god war. <laughs> my thought process know. is I wanted to test myself is really what it was in the fact that I wanted to be as different of a character from what I was because when we started playing Strahd like before we even did it like 
we were at your old house. Justin came oh, up yeah. for a weekend to visit. You and I literally both made meme characters. Chris on gel. Yeah, he was a <laughs> wizard. <laughs> when is he going to come back? Uh, <laughs> Mind free. Episode 55. Are you ready? Um, <laughs> What's the meme? Chris on gel. The whole time. Eats camera. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we both created meme characters. And then when it came to us playing, I was like, I don't know, man. I wrote a fun backstory. I thought it was a good time. It made me laugh. And I wanted to play it. And, like This time, like I wrote a backstory that was incredibly serious. Like... Me and Justin was sitting there. He's like, "Dude, what the fuck did you even do to this guy?" I like, and I was like, "I don't know." Like, yeah. <laughs> it just all felt right. Thing. It just all felt right. I don't know. Like, and I, I just kind of like channeled a little bit of like how I feel in real life to uh, uh, like about like basically like his motivations of how he ended up in prison is like kind of how I feel. Like, I'm very like pro animal and anti animal testing. That the fact that he kind of like liberating animal stables and stuff like that mm-hmm. with doing that's like some shit that I've like if a younger Mike would have totally done <laughs> like so I don't know I just I really wanted to test myself and do something incredibly different from what I was because literally I was just hack smash kill everything <laughs> right yeah and now I'm just right. like my brother now I'm just like well now I can cast an actual spell to attack I can cast a buff I can summon things pause like like realistically now I'm currently doing stuff where if I wanted to like make Justin hate me I can summon 12 animals to fight with me and basically give myself a round that gives me 14 attacks well just fucking (laughs) tell me so I can put the fucking tokens down well I I know that's why I usually try and prep you being like hey dude I'm gonna use these guys (laughs) well fuck now I gotta do it (laughs) (laughs) but I mean I still try and keep it fun like the fact that I like the satyrs that I like to summon I named them after Degeneration X but I didn't tell him that because I knew that that was something that was gonna make Justin laugh and he was gonna get a kick out of it (laughs) because that's that's one of the things that I think is most fun is like obviously we we're, we're playing this because we have fun playing it but like if I tell him that I'm going to do something but I don't tell him to the extent I feel like he's going to get a kick out of something sometimes uh-huh. yeah. and because of the fact that he's always pulling surprises and shit on us it's nice to <laughs> give one back to him every once in a while throw him a bone Yeah, I don't know I don't know if I answered your question at all but realistically my main, you yeah, you my main motivation so. was I wanted to be as far different from what I did last time because obviously I took it very seriously but in the beginning it definitely didn't seem that way and I wanted I, I felt like I especially owed it more to you guys and owed it to myself to show that like no this is I had so much fun playing this game and I'm serious about it and I wanted to actually like put myself to the test and there's still a lot of shit that he can do that I don't know you guys like realize yet like <laughs> yeah I'm now with our level bump we've had a lot of role play too yeah so we haven't really we're definitely I, role play heavy we're role play heavy like role play's fun I, I, I do like the fighting I, it's a little more to think about, especially for you, mm-hmm. when you have so many spells and stuff, mm-hmm. where we just end up defaulting to the same stuff. Like, at least I do. Yeah. Um, what? Nothing. Yeah, chill touch. I just chill use my cantrip. Well, th- and that's what I realized after playing this this half wizard, is I don't really like playing spellcasters, because I don't want to think about that. Yeah. I want to, like, Echo Knight, which I haven't made yet, is, is like, perfect for me. Because it's all warrior, but then, like... Little bits. Little bit of spells. Little yeah. bits. You know, like, let me do a Misty Step kind of thing. And then, like, yeah. Eldritch Blast. Good thing stuff. you're a paladin. I know. Also, you can start smiting things. I forget. You I spent start. 50 episodes not doing it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I have a question. So, because Mike kind of said it, has there been anything that I've done that surprised you? Over the I mean, this whole thing. thing. <laughs> besides that. Besides my brain being broken. I mean, <laughs> I think... The I, for me obviously the Loki reveal broke my brain. I think it broke a lot of our brains. Yeah. I mean, like just go back and watch that clip and like you just like because you didn't even like you didn't reveal anything. You you just like it's Josh specifically because I remember the exact line that he said. Sure. He's like, "We have a lot to talk about, brother." And uh, then you're just like, "You see your brother Loki," and I'm just kind of sitting there I'm like. <laughs> my, I think my favorite Mike quote was, why are you guys like this? Because <laughs> that was immediately after we like wrapped we the episode, streaming. but before we hung up. Yeah, yeah. no, it's on the stream of it's why stream. are you guys like this? And it's just Josh serpentining. Yeah. <laughs> You're literally doing the, what is it, um, from Auntie Donna, the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was singing the uh, little Einstein's theme in the living room, and then I came back. <laughs> I mean, that, that was something... Like, I've been so excited for that reveal. It had been, what, almost a full... When did we do it? 
how long? How October. Long? October. We made the character. It's October to November. Yeah, so a whole year. year. Same with uh, with the Thor reveal. We yeah. took what is it? We did it early, like late September. Late September, or I think. Yeah, maybe, maybe was, early September. Maybe it was early September, but it was in September. Yeah, and it was yeah, it was that was a long time really coming. Fun. I would just I would love if we had either one of us had a lot of time, or there was a super fan who could cut Carlos. 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 Okay, Carlos, go through all the episodes <laughs> and find every time I hinted at Loki, because oh I did it there are so, so many. much. It's so, and I'm, I'm so glad that no one picked up on it. But if you go back and watch it, there's so many things. Yeah. Like, I, the first one that I remember really, really doing was after we killed that uh, moss monster yep. mm -hmm. in, the, in the I thought patrol. it was weird, but I never thought about yeah. it. So when, when uh, he was like, he was up on the mushroom staring at the corpse that we had just defeated. And he's just like muttering to himself and getting really angry. I switched the accent to the English accent. Mm -hmm. And... I think because it was so new, everyone's just like, appropriate. oh, he just messed up. But that was 100% intentional. Yeah. So, you guys hear the song that just came on, right? No, what What's is it? The? Dan Dick and Dana. Dan Dick and Dana. That's Dan awesome. Dan Dick and Dana. It's Jack Black. Um, it's done. Best TikTok ever. I think um, I also hinted at it with, so I really liked the, I was actually watching it today, uh, the Zunu episode. Uh, the Zuno episode where uh, he showed his clairvoyance or his power because it kind of took you all back to and it showed what was really cool. It just showed all of your characters kind of backstories without giving it. Yeah. Like, uh, so I, I mean, I can give this away and I know that you've asked about it. So the whole uh, Firefly, he took my hair. That's a Norse mythological, like on Sif's wedding day, Loki shaved Sif's head. head. Yeah. Because he was like, yeah, he keeps talking about how fucking great this hair is. I'm going to take the hair. It's going to be hilarious. <laughs> and then he's getting strangled and he's like, maybe it's not hilarious. <laughs> but like little things like that. And then like your two, your ice giant friend where oh, yeah. you're talking to them in the Dremel voice and one of them, the dumber one going, I don't like when he does that voice. And then you doing the French voice. And he's like, I don't like the French voice either. And you just throwing in different, like, I thought that would lead everyone on to, like, oh, Dremel isn't what he seems. He does voices. I just thought he was a crazy guy with multiple personalities. Yeah, at that point, <laughs> I was just like, he's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Uh, also, the, the revelation of Alder having brothers. Yeah. And Alder mm -hmm. going under the radar, like, oh, okay. It's a reverse like, shark. It, yeah, it yeah. was a reverse shark. Like, there, was, there wasn't a, like... Nothing. It, <laughs> it didn't. Come, it didn't come off across Mike's face until I texted him. I'm like, by the way, remember you don't have brothers, my guy. And you're like, <laughs> oh fuck, I don't have brothers. <laughs> Wait, brothers? Just realized it's not a. It's not a. It's a, a reverse shard as a butt chug. I think it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's when you prairie dog. Uh, Turtle head. <laughs> Turtle head. But um, sorry. No, you're okay. So yeah, I'm just trying to think like what. Have I have I pulled anything on you that you didn't expect? Like I, Hercules. Hercules. Oh, that was cool. I was very I I I enjoyed that arc more than I thought I was going to, and I thought I was going to enjoy that arc. I I envisioned the Hercules being like that little that mini arc being kind of a place filler. Mm -hmm. And I feel like what it actually does is it really sets up the next our Valoria arc very well and it it humanizes Thor again mm -hmm. for a little bit you don't look at him in you know I, I feel like that whole time we're on the island post like Manu and Thought joking around nobody's like oh god oh he's a god oh my god I'm gonna bow like and it really humanizes him after that, and it was it was really cool. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, I, oh, sorry. Uh, um, so I I don't think there's anything, nothing's coming to mind that I was like shocked by, but I am just generally impressed because you you have these characters and you're able to make them distinct but similar enough mm -hmm. so well, went through the accents or the, or the characterization of them, and it's like I can feel when characters are like grouped together. You know, okay. if, they, if they, like, belong together or if they're, like, a, I don't know, part of the same group. Like, Carlos's or Thok's, um Sue. 
Like Sue, yeah. just it feels like someone who would be with Thok, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it's the way that that Carlos wrote it, but also the way that you portray Sue. Um, they and, need each other because they need each other. Yeah. Piggybacking off of the Hercules thing and saying that you thought it might be a filler episode, that's another thing that I get impressed with because things that could be with a with a lesser DM just be filler episodes. Justin manages to make them meaningful. And that's yeah. also us, you know, like we, yeah. we play the characters well, but but having this this tournament arc that could have been a, a huge nothing arc. Like I threw in the thing with you that was, you know, it was just a thing. Yeah. But I was gonna say, yeah. I'll get to that in a second. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> it's like I have thoughts. Yeah. But but making it Hercules instead of just some big guy is like do you ever see that Disney Channel movie with the twins who play basketball? Yeah, double team. Double team. Irish. No. <laughs> no, that was that was a different movie. Yeah. Double but, teamed, yeah. But yeah, and they're like they go through the movie it's where they like they can just pass the ball somewhere five, and they two, know five, the four. twins gonna be there. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what I, I envision with you is like you know that if you just throw the ball somewhere, we're going to be there to pick it up and, and do something with yeah. it. And that's what I see Hercules as. Um I always saw Hercules, the Hercules arc for me was I wanted to show Thor what he could have been if he just stayed on Earth. Like, if he figured his life out, knew he was Thor, he'd probably just try to do something to the extent of, like, I'm comfortable here, I'm able to do this, like, why, am, why can I overcomplicate? And then also adding into the Hercules figuring out kind of what happened to his family and it not being such a great thing. And you know, figuring out why this person wants to stay here, not out of just like, yo, I get to fuck as much as I want. Yo, what's his name? <laughs> fuck. Uh, it's because... Randy? Ra no, not Randy. Randy not shit himself. Randy. <laughs> Randy's across the street? What's R up? Um, no, it... You know, finding out that he had a wife, he had kids, and something bad happened to where he feels responsible. Because he is responsible. Because he is, he did it. But not intentionally. Um, yeah, I wanted to put that in. Then I still wanted to put roots into the, uh, to the world. Has Justin ever done anything to surprise me? Um, yes. But now I'm thinking last campaign, this campaign, both. Um, I'm going to solely focus on this campaign. Um, yeah, I would definitely say yes. Uh, the biggest surprise for me probably like because my jaw just dropped was when dremel revealed that he was loki and how justin just took all that backstory and information and even the fact that the uh pat and or the fact that pat and donner had no idea that josh slash dremel was actually his brother the entire time and the fact that Josh how to play it in a way that he's known this information since the start of this campaign and tie it into Pat's backstory. The, just the, the interweaving and then the fact that Justin as a DM has to take all of that information that both of the players took and intertwine it and interlock it and do a reveal in a way that just flowed so naturally. I was all for it. I'm pretty sure during the video, if you go back and look, my jaw just went like, or I just covered my face, or I don't remember. I just remember that I reacted to it just because it was definitely a shocker for me. Um, yeah, definitely that moment. Thanks, Josh. Then that goes to Mike. Did I did I do anything that kind of threw you for a loop? I mean, you have been, but I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be the Liliandra and the kids in the in the temple. Oh well, yeah, that was terrifying. Um, it was awful, right? Yeah, I did not like any of that because of the fact that you, like, everyone's like, you're just like, I sent you something as to what you see, and I'm just like, dude, what yeah. the fuck is wrong with you? Um, but, yeah. no, I mean, right oh, now God, is geez. you're you're messing, you're messing with Alder, and he doesn't know what's going on yet. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel yet because I feel like this is going to be something that's going to lead to something else. Everything because, leads to something else. Well, yeah, no shit, but... <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, you know everything, Mike. You take 60 points of psychic dip. You can take it. Roll 3d6. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Punch Mike in the face. Yeah. 
but uh, no, but that, that's my thing is like, I don't know if I've been thrown entirely for a loop yet because of the fact that right now you are currently throwing me for a loop. Okay. So I, I, I need to see how it plays out right now to see if this is going to be something that's going to fuck with me more than what's already fucked with me. Okay. So let me backpack off of that then the and ask you, let me pat back off Ooh. of that and TM. Um, and ask, <clears throat> is Mike excited to go back to where Alder's from? And is Alder excited to go back to where Alder's from? Is Mike excited? Yes. Is Alder excited? Fuck no. Okay. He knows we have to. He knows he has to. He's not looking forward to it. At all. What's the, what's the hesitancy? I know it's been a century, but... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been the fact that it's been a century and the fact that he was exiled, but the hesitancy right now comes from the fact that he got away to build basically a better relationship with his family by, by exile. Like, they wanted him to be better for the family business. And in that time away, he's now no longer what's better for the family business, and he was not notified that he's no longer what's better for the family business. He knows that. He doesn't know that they, he, they don't know that he knows that. So he knows that going back, no matter what, it's pretty much going to be a shit story. So he's, he's not excited for anything that's going to happen with his family at this point. Do you want us to kill your dad? <laughs> TBD. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Could... Mike finally gets to have daddy issues. <laughs> it's about time. It's about time. Cigarettes. <laughs> Where's your dad? He's out getting He's at the parliaments. Pay. He's at the peyote parliaments. tree. <laughs> He's at the dock. Uh, I will say this, Mike. I think when you get there, it's going to be something you don't expect. I'm curious. You're going to be. <laughs> Speaking of us writing up lore for the town, uh, I guess there's things that uh, we'll, we'll we'll have to discuss later. Yeah, everyone has two heads. <laughs> it's your that's, that's your, your eyes. Oh, <laughs> they they mean well. They do their best. They're, They're goofy. I picture them like the uh, the ice giants from Kingdom Hearts. You ever played? No. It's no. Well, yes. one person who listened to the podcast will get it. Uh, the, a lot of people. You get it? Oh, okay. Get it. Yeah. Like okay, cool. The person who matters. So fuck you guys. <laughs> All right. He played Kingdom Hearts. I paid to Josh to roll 3D6. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to die. Shit. <laughs> Always have your app. Oh, I didn't do my dice game with you. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. We'll do it later. Okay. We'll have a week. Um, so now that we're, we're going into Valoria, or we're in Valoria, we have an incursion coming. We have Flev, Flevlog Surterson. Oh, my fucking hammer. All right, gee, I haven't heard that <laughs> since session one. My hammer, oh, he like wing it. Baby wanted hammer. Uh, <laughs> but we and have no, um, no, I have Levlog Surterson, and we have Enya coming. Do we have like any thoughts, like, like anything? Singer? Not the singer. Are you sure? <laughs> you know what? I'll check. <laughs> I'll check the uh, Let me their check trailer, the, the character sheet. Yeah. Uh, Oh, you know what? It says sail away like twice. I think it's any of the singer. <laughs> Shit. Sail away. That's even worse. Sail That's away. just the warning. Um, or it's just Dennis D. Young from Styx. So, so we have this incursion. I think um, going into Valoria with the giant incursion, was it what you were expecting? Was it something that, you know, you guys haven't fought an actual giant before. And now at this point you fought two. First time I thought we were going to die. I thought we weren't. I thought we were going to actually have time, and that it was going to be more RP and almost like a uh, was it two towers where the big battle happens at the end. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be more like that, um, where we had time to kind of prepare and we had to think about what sort of um, uh, what's the word preparations strategize. And yeah, strat which which is why I was I was doing the the Calcio Valoria team one because I think that'd be a fun like offshoot mm. for, for like a session when Carlos can't be there you know we just get to mess around as long that. as you run it I'm cool with it okay um, <laughs> in other words Justin's not I'm not doing catch I know I need I need to finish the game I've got it like half done but um, that's why I actually started doing it was because I wanted to get an army that was like strong athletic and loyal to Dremel slash Loki so that when the battle happened he could use them as 
Uh, cannon fodder. Bait? <laughs> no, well, no. Maybe cannon fodder or maybe, like, the, the dr- was it the drow? The drow that were yeah. all around? Like, uh, they could have handled the drow. something different, dude. Dr- Drugar. Yeah. <laughs> the Drugar. The they could have handled the Drugar, I mean, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I, I figured that would be a way to kind of bolster our defenses. Oh, it stopped. Um, but yeah, that, that was my intent. And then, mm-hmm. so I guess that could have been a, uh, a thing you did that surprised me. You're like, yeah, they're not fucking here. Yeah. I mean... <sighs> The incursion was always going to happen. Yeah. Um, I just didn't know it would be before we got there. Well, I mean, you still have time to prep and strat. Uh, that's also what I was I wanted to talk about. So I mentioned this to Pat because I know Thor and Loki want to get to Asgard, or at least Loki or Thor wants to get to Asgard in preparation. Meanwhile, Alder needs to go home to figure out how you're gonna get to uh, the moon. Yes. Nidavellir. Nidavellir. So it's, I pitched, I never say to split the party, but I think it could be interesting to do two sessions separate from each other, where Mm. we have a Loki Thor going to Asgard and we have Alder and Thok going to Falsera. Falsera. Could be interesting. Um, all of the shenanigans. I mean, yeah. <laughs> depending, I mean, Loki knows what's gonna happen when they get there, and it's not positive, which mm-hmm. obviously we can play out, and I can give you more detail on. And I just, I think they're both gonna be very two different sessions, and both of them are gonna lead back to, you know, going back to Valoria, and depending mm-hmm. on how it times out, possibly an arrival of either Floodlog. Or Enya. Or both. And or then both. we die. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Um, it's been... It's been one, one week. <laughs> um, very interesting. Uh, the giant fights were, were interesting. Um, and one of the things that we haven't gotten to talk about as a, as a group yet, because there's, there's so much that happened in that, that episode where uh, we killed the second fire giant whose name Turk no not Turk House he was first Turk House was the first one Turk House was first Egan Egan, Egan. was second um Turk House Thor told him that he was the king of Asgard and kind of took that mantle and it didn't really I don't know I wasn't staring at your faces obviously because I was role playing and looking at Justin yeah um but there wasn't much of a reaction and I kind of wanted to know especially from J- your perspective Josh but also I mean Alder, you know, you're first you're like, fuck, this dude's a god, and now he's claiming himself as a king. What, where is your character's headspace at with that? And, and again, Loki is obviously going to be interesting, but um, Alder is just like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> no, Alder is just not surprised by anything at this point. Which <laughs> that's, is fair. That's fair. Like, it's hard. How can I be surprised? S- real quick side note I sent Justin a really cool piece of, uh, like, uh, equipment that I think would be really cool for you and we've discussed it and it might we'll be see something showing up but it's really fucking cool we'll see. anyway Joshua Me. okay um, I think I it was it was combination um, relief and jealousy there's a there's a, a modicum of jealousy that Loki yeah Loki just he wants some level of power but I also think the relief um outweighs it because he doesn't really want that power anymore if he ever did at one point um i think he realizes where his strengths are and it's not to be the same type he's not the same type of leader that you are mm-hmm. and it's not the leader that asgard needs mm-hmm. um i think the the way that i i like to play loki is less of the less a little less smarmy a little less i know everything i'm better than everyone and you know, I should be doing everything. Big, big brain mountain boy. Big brain mountain boy. Still very <laughs> smart, but it's it's that he he's grown and evolved to know where calculated. Calculated, yeah. But he he's grown to realize that the answer is not always I need to do it. Yeah. You know, he's gotten to a point that he he can see that okay, this is this is what Thor is is good at. It's what he's meant to do. It's what the people would want to. Whereas well, whereas Loki is is more. I. I guess I would say more engineering focus. You know, he wants to create something 
that's his own because he's never had something that was his own. Right. So what about that? Uh, that's very interesting to me that that Loki feels that way. It's going to be a, a son of a bitch to get there mm-hmm. and, and to actually realize that possibility. But um, how does how does Alder feel about being in a god war? Because that's essentially what's happening right now. Yeah. Um... Didn't know about gods until recently. And now he's in a war with two gods on his side, but going against other gods. Well, here's the thing that you have to keep in mind is that being the fact that Alder is basically a, you know, he's a druid. He's a worshiper of nature. Seeing what they're trying to do to Valoria, even though that Valoria in and of itself being that it's a civilization and they've leveled the earth to build a city onto it, it, that in and of itself is not natural. He still saw what they did to the outskirts and what their plans are. He's on your side because they're trying to destroy the planet. So you know that you at least, whether he agrees with you or disagrees with you, if that's one of their motivations, you still always have an ally in Alder. Yeah. I think part of what he's asking too is how does he feel not about what either side is doing, but about being involved. How big what he's now involved in is. He doesn't realize it. No? He doesn't realize that that the god war that it's a god war and that it's you gotta remember he didn't meet you guys as gods but he has now that, but, I think that's, what but he, that's the thing is gods don't mean anything to him is it like okay. a magnitude thing yeah like he doesn't he, understand he doesn't the grasp magnitude the magnitude oh of it. So, okay so because he's still, you guys are the guys that he was in prison with you guys are just friends like he's like well, he, yeah, he doesn't god. that's why he still refers to you guys as he doesn't feel comfortable calling you guys loki and thor so he doesn't... Wait, okay, so just fill me in his backstory. He doesn't know about gods or he doesn't believe in gods? He, he doesn't follow gods. He doesn't... He, he doesn't... He, he, does, he never paid attention to learning about religion. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So he, he knows that they exist. Exactly. He knows but, that they but exist. But not to what scale. Yeah. Okay, that's... Okay, cool. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. He, that's why if I, roll, if I roll good on a religion check, it's because it was a natural 20. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, so that's the thing is, he knows you guys as what you were before you guys became gods. So the fact that you're gods is, to him, is relatively insignificant because he knows Donner. He knows Dremel. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know Loki. He doesn't know Thor. Right. He knows his, um, stupid ice. He knows, like, Piss his, off ghost. he knows, Piss he knows ghost. his localized world. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't have a concept of, of the, the greater cosmic scale yeah. of it. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, as long as, as long as Donner and Dremel's motivations in some way still align with his, which as of right now, these people are trying to destroy a civilization and destroy the nature that it's built upon. Well, and, he's on your side. And Flevlog and Enya have even said, like, they're not just going to destroy the lawyer. They're going to destroy everything. Yeah. They're like, gonna, they're going to level. They're going to salt the earth. Everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're going to, they're going to Sherman, Georgia. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So how do I feel about being caught up in a god war? Um, personally, I Carlos think it's awesome. It's a very interesting dilemma um, that we are going to be facing. Uh, Thok, I think he's ready for it. Um, he's been, obviously, he's gone up through some ups and downs and he's had great things that have happened to him and then he's also had terrible things that are happening to him due to God. So he's used to being around them. He's used to them kind of playing a part in his story. Um, but at the moment after everything he's been through, now rediscovering his faith, being even stronger connected with Pelor, um, I think he's, he's ready for it. Uh, being able to combine, for example, the negative and positive energies of the necrotic great sword and Lightbringer, his mace, and being able to put holy energy and necrotic energy together, I think signifies the next step in his journey, something major that has happened to be able to move forward to something else. So, yeah, I definitely think that Thok is going to be ready for the next step 
we'll we'll see obviously how he acts and how everything goes but he's gonna kind of follow the god's lead you know there's two of them right in front of him and he's known these people since before obviously since before he knew they were gods but you know these met him as friends before he realized that they were divine in any way shape or form so he's he's ready to jump in and help them in any way that they can because they've helped him quite a bit along the way so go back to what you were talking about about the um you're so bad at eating ice. i know well it's because i start talking and then it, i sound like i have ice in my mouth or something Dicks in <laughs> my mouth. just a very Weird. small one a cold um pee-pee. you we we had yes. we had slightly touched on the, the loki's tournament. loki's threat to alder yes and i want to know deeper what your thoughts are on it more so, well, that was actually Dremel's threat. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, Dremel's threat. Loki was not revealed at that point. Um, Rick Fred? <laughs> He's here. All this line. All this I wanted line. to kill you. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Uh, you had no, no right to be involved in that, whether it was true or not true, and I haven't had a reason to be distrustful of you. So because of that and not having a reason to not trust you on it, I believe that what you were saying is true. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to literally intimidate you into basically into submission to get you to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. To make sure that if what you were saying, like if you were legitimately doing that, he knew. Because he needed clarity on it. Right. Like that's what he's most, the thing that he's most terrified about based on what he learned from Zunu is going back home and if you've been communicating with his home he I mean he could have left the party Mm -hmm. you know that's where it was at that's that's not that that's what something that he has to work out you can't you don't I don't want you in there right so my original plan before you said that was going to be beat you into the ground in the battle Mm -hmm. and then give up when you were on your dying like when you were on on your last leg Uh and just concede and let you win so that way you got what you wanted but just show that i'm powerful too Mm -hmm. kind of thing um but what you said frustrated me to the point to where i lost sight of what i was doing yeah so that's part of the reason why since all that happened he's like fucking around with donner more and sparring he's trying to learn how to control himself better because of the fact that he let you get in the sand Mm -hmm. which obviously we had our falling out and you kind of discussed that saying like you know that it's going to get way worse than that like if i'm in your head now like how are you going to handle shit like this Mm -hmm. which is right totally was god war yeah here we are but yeah no it was in the moment i wanted to murder you uh (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's fair that was the, that it's was a the theme. play. That was yeah. the play. It's a theme of the I mean, that's, Loki. That Loki just finds himself in those positions. With Josh's characters. Weird. Yeah, we all kind of want to murder you at some point. Yeah, <clears throat> in real life, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, on that, mm-hmm. does anybody have a, a second character ready? Nope. Yeah, I got a few. <laughs> <laughs> I have characters that I've made that can Arclight. be modified. Like, I have, um, when we were, I think it was your one shot, was a level 10? No, that mine's been, at 13. Oh, you're okay. It was at twelve. Yours was twelve. Mine Sorry, was ten. 12. Okay, so I have I have a twelve, which is also a furball, coincidentally. But I think he was an artificer. Artificer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that's like I have him as a fallback. Um, but no, I like I don't I don't make a second one until I have to, because it's kind of like the uh, the Batman coming out of the what's that thing where he had to tie the rope around and then he had to untie the rope and make the jump because if he had a way to fail. He oh, would fail. um, La- Lazar- Lazar- Lazarus the pit. The Lazarus pit. Yeah, the Lazarus pit. It's not actually a Lazarus pit. It's just, but it's fine. Yeah, but yeah. in the movie, that's yeah. what they called it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that. That's kind of how I think of it. Is I'll Fucking I'll nerd. do that when I have to. But otherwise, I want to feel that the the tension of maybe dying, and yeah. because I, I do feel like the characters the characters that I make become. I project myself into them, mm-hmm. and it feels like if something happens to them, it happens to me. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I have a level 12 character built right now as well that I could transition to it, but that was, again, built for your your campaign. So not, like, going to put any information out there in regards to, you know, what that character is, but... I think I know. You, I, we've probably discussed it, but at the same time, I, probably a year ago. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been a while. So, is it the bard? Yeah, yeah bard block. Uh, Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 
But with that being said, is that character right for this campaign? Might not be. God war. That's the thing is currently what we're, you know, what we've, what we've been seeing is I'm kind of in the, 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 the same neighborhood as Josh. If I build a backup character now, but I don't, but, but Alder dies 30 episodes from now or something like that, where's the campaign going to be? Is that character that I built even going to be relevant in the grand scheme of things? High likelihood is no, yeah. you know? Based on uh, conversations I've had with Justin, I do have an idea for a second character, but not nothing is fleshed out more than just a class. Yeah. It just I I know something that I mentioned to him that it would fit in, and that's it. So it's not something I have any weight. It's into Dremel. All. It's Dremel. <laughs> it's Absidy. Yeah, Absidy's back. Well, I, that's what I would do. I would bring back Rufio. Would you? I okay. thought about that as well with Shark, but my thing is with Shark, there's the possibility of him not just being a full barbarian anymore he might have multiclassed at this point because now he's basically like a war general mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely would only come back if called upon like it would have to be well probably rufio and shark and well and Th fox there so at least one of you and justin and i have talked about it uh and this is i'm i feel bad if this gets released before we talk to carlos but one of the things we talked about is potentially at some point doing a one shot mm -hmm. to go get Duke's soul. Oh. Putting the party back together and going and finding Duke to bring him back. We're getting yeah. the band back. Getting <laughs> the yeah. band back together. We gotta get that old queen out of shadow <laughs> Old queen being Duke. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I got a fa guys, I have a family now. And a and a thriving mattress business. I can't just Look up at and me. Leave. Look at this. All thanks Where's to Satan. Where's your donkey? All thanks to Oh, no. All these mattress firms are mine, and they're Broom totally Hilda, not we're leaving. <laughs> and Broomhilda is the donkey. It's one of my favorite conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah. That all mattress stores are fronts. Jesus Christ. I believe it. I believe you it. You ever seen anyone It's one? more fun to believe. I've been in one. Did you buy anything? Who yeah, a mattress. <laughs> Why? They sell yeah. drugs. <laughs> oh, I should have bought the drugs you. instead of the thing to open, sleep on. Open your mattress. So, uh, <laughs> oh, so how so do we weed. how do we feel about? Um, I feel like in the last episode, especially, um, Thor is taking on more of a leadership role, and I've tried to make a conscious effort in this campaign to not have that role because Rufio was such that driving force in the first campaign how does everyone feel about that kind of manifesting itself and I'm curious from Justin's perspective too how do you feel about Thor kind of calling the shots um I, I think it's a natural progression uh, as it's kind of been and how things have kind of rolled everything has been a very uh, at least from my viewpoint everything has been very collaborative between the four of you of what your goals have been uh we need to get to the boat well how do we get to the boat let's figure out how we get to the boat we need to talk to the snake guy the snake guy knows about things we need to go to this town we need to save these guy uh this lady's kids like it's been very collaborative but it's also i mean i wouldn't say to the extent of you pulling the god card of like a oh, well, thar so we have to listen to me it's essentially like, listen, I know what the situation is, and this is what we need to do, and this is where I'm going to go for it. What are you going to do for it? So it's still in that collaborative nature. It's just you're putting what your thought process and what your character's, uh, you know, objective is, essentially, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a, a case of, like, Thor's taking the lead and he's the leader in my head. It's I'm the best suited for what's going on at the moment. Loki knows kind of what's going on as well, and I think he's going to be a great asset. But I did God Killing as a, a hobby, and business was a booming <laughs> before I left. And I'm, I'm ready to pick it back up. I'm ready to get out of retirement, <laughs> like Gronkowski. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I felt like everyone has kind of, at this point, everyone has taken or needs to take like a hold of what they need to bring to the table to stop Valoria from falling. Because Valoria, to put into the grander scheme, Valoria is not only a uh, the home of the the continent's queen, it's a superpower. The, the entire continent is a superpower under this one fucking person. And it's being leveled. It's seen so many battles. There was a giant fucking Draco lich dragon. And this one person defeated it by themselves and they're yeah. getting fucking stomped I need my fucking hammer 
<laughs> well, I was going to say, kind of going back to that, I mean, your character's Thor, dude. You were kind of always going to be the leader to a certain <laughs> point. And you're also playing a character who is very hard-headed in your motivations at times. So you're always going to try to bend the will of the party to get to where you need to go. Pat. So <laughs> <laughs> Just Accurate. playing Pat. Accurate. Pat, you Fair enough. Weird. All my characters end up being hard-headed. It's... What is that? <laughs> I just really want you to just play like an introvert one time. <laughs> he I did that. I Guys, did a wizard. You can, you can do whatever you want. I don't care. I did. I was a wizard. The moon druid was my favorite. Where you're just like, I love the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe it was. No, the wizard was that too. Yeah, wizard, both yeah. of those characters Jack were both like wizard. kind of fucking weird. That was fun. I think. It's I like, think, like Justin said, it it makes sense that yeah. that uh, Thor takes the lead in a lot of things. Um, I can say from Loki's perspective. Like I was saying before, he's kind of realized where he belongs in in the like, in the hierarchy, in the hierarchy, but also in the just where he puts his energies. So when I was saying that he's more of an engineer, like he's you don't really you don't know his backstory or how he got to where he is yet. Right. There's so, there's a long conversation coming. Yeah. So he he did the leader thing, and it's not it didn't end up the way he wanted it to. So that that is why he's more mature, more adult, and why he's like, oh, I'm just I'm really just a problem solver and a creative <laughs> thinker. So like, when when Justin was saying we need to think of what we bring to the table, that's what I see as as Loki's job. Like if we're a company, Thor's the CEO, Loki's the the CTO, the chief technical officer. He just figures out what we need and how to. How to get it. How to get it. You know, he'll make shit happen, but but he's not the one to rally the people to have the relationship, you know? Right. Um, Yeah. Cool. Does anyone have a favorite NPC yet? Wizard Steve. (laughs) Wizard Steve hasn't even showed up yet. I know. That's how good he is. (laughs) Just because of his answering machine? (laughs) Yeah. New York, Hmm. New York. Go Mad City Field. That's the headquarters. (laughs) It's me. I'm on vacation. Uh, I think mine was probably Hercules. Yeah, my I, that that interaction with him and and Thor was really cool, and it was really nice. Um, I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to, and I think we played off of each other really well. Yeah, and it was fun to to kind of flex that. I don't get to flex like kind of like playing i wouldn't say he's not even a meathead well he's a meathead he's a meathead but he means well he's a nice meathead yeah I drop my oh, he's okay. a sweethead he's a sweethead he's a sweetie and then uh mine is my yeah oh there it is it my dropped. favorite uh yeah. keep my, going my favorite npc oh, is uh is valdana so far really mm-hmm. well he tried to have a like like a meet cute with her and it just didn't work you and Al- Alder and Valdana? I tried to, and then it just never played out to anything. Really? Yeah. It's you don't funny. remember when him with him awkwardly being like, oh, I think you look really nice, and then kind of just like running away. Like, no. <laughs> I said you look shitty. Good night, Denise. Good night, Denise. That's basically how it was, yeah, and it kind of just never never amounted to anything, so it kind of just know. like kind of ended it there. But, um, Should have been a shot. You never know. But no. I, I, Clearly I, Mike's out of the flirting game. <laughs> yeah, and I've been out of it for many, many, many He's like, many no, many you moons. look great. <laughs> Roll. <laughs> Do I tell her the truth? Um, yeah, he's like, no, he's but but uh, like honestly, her her dynamics funny, being the fact that she's got Loki and Thor around her, but follows their brother who's estranged at this point. Mia, you know, yeah. so yeah. It, it's a really really fun dynamic, especially with the two of them just being like, "Follow me, follow me," and then she's being like, "She's oh. like hard pass." <laughs> I'm the <laughs> only person suck. that's been able to contact your brother in the last. 10 years you really want me you to really just want me to just give up on that like and both of them are like yeah, yeah it sucks. <laughs> such a fucking puke yeah so it's uh yeah it's, it's he's the way he's, he's the he's, kevin jonas he's kevin jonas <laughs> he's not though he's, he's actually the nick jonas he's frankie jonas <laughs> he's he's the best one out of the three of them yeah. that's I, what's funny i think uh for me it's vindrin vindrin oh, yeah of course. yeah Vindren's yeah great. like i i was trying to to Think through the whole campaign, but the first thing that came to mind was Vindra. Yeah, and I, I think, aside from it just being a good, fun character, for Loki, it was what brought the team together. It was a mother figure, which we now know he no longer has, mm-hmm. and it was the first person in a long, long time to see him for who he was, 
and not give him shit for it. Because when he sat on on her knee, she's like, oh, you're lighter than I thought, you know? Yeah. And then she's like, that's what, you know, you are who you are, and I accept you for that. And, and that's something he has not felt much in his life. She also, it, here's another Loki look for you. She said, why are you always so blue? You look so sad all the time. Why are you so sad? Mm -hmm. Who is my favorite NPC? Well, hmm. That one's hard. Just because there's some pretty good ones. And ironically enough, I think some of my favorite NPCs have started to show up. And I think I'm kind of biased. They're tied into my storyline, into Fox storyline. So I think that's why so far they're probably my favorite NPCs. Um, cause for example, Mokren, the weapons expert on the horizon, fucking hilarious. Um, one of the funniest characters and he's only been in what one episode so far maybe two i think one um he's just cracks me up um sue is every gay boy's best friend i love her i hate her she's like a sister so she's awesome Obviously, Tiburon, because that's who Fog is in love with. Um, Carlos is a player, hasn't interacted with him as much yet. So I'm looking forward to see, like, the growth and connection between Tiburon and Fock and how I'm going to play. Obviously, this relationship has been existing for so long. And tying that and playing with that relationship in the game. Because... Uh, as a player, I've never had a, when any of my characters have a relationship with an NPC. So this is going to be a very interesting and new experience. And then, but I think overall, my favorite character is Creed. Um, Captain Creed, she's just a badass. She knows what she wants. She doesn't take shit. Um, I'm all for a strong, independent woman, and that's exactly what she is. She's amazing. She's my spirit animal. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say Captain Creed. Definitely one of my favorite NPCs. I'm trying to think what else. So, man, uh, I'm trying to think of like who I really enjoy playing as far as an NPC. You love playing Val. I do enjoy playing Val. I enjoy playing Val a lot. Do you want to give more of Val's backstory? Because I feel like I know it. I don't know if they know it. And I know our viewers don't know it. Um, <laughs> our, our viewer. Our viewer. Carlos, we got, we got Carlos is in three. the thing. Yeah, we've got a handful. Yeah. Don't downplay our, Gandalf our fans. The babe. That's, that's very Anne Devlin. Devlin. Anne Devlin's Devlin. friend. Whose name Another I can't remember Another TV viewer. No. Which that's we know is Amanda in the Root. Is Jeff Atten, yeah. Atten, Commander Root. We have David, people. why won't you answer my calls? <laughs> Get followers dot now. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Social Blade. That's a YouTube thing. Um, no, Valdana's. I mean, Valdana's interesting to the fact that she. I'm trying not to like super lore dump, but you can lore dump. Uh, it all just stems from my original character, my first character that I made, uh, Finn Meyer. Uh, there was a cool story that, that Shane originally made for him and I just kind of expanded on it. And in any kind of aspect of any kind of Middle Earth or J.R.L. Tolkien world, humans are whores. Humans <laughs> are fucking sluts. They love fucking everything. Yeah, that's true. And my character was no different. He has a... He has offspring with his original wife. That's who Abigail is and that's who Valdana's mother is, uh, who we met in the, the most previous episode. Um, he had another child, which was Alistair Creed, who is Captain Creed's father, who is the red tiefling that you met. Uh, and then he has a third child, Alistair, who is possibly Anya's offspring that we don't know what happened to. Um, and Valdana originally grew with these other two people. And, you know, it was kind of like they were supposed to be like the new wave of heroes that were coming where the original three were the new mutants they're the <laughs> new mutants the new avengers if you will they were speed and uh wiccan no um they were supposed to be like they were supposed to take care of when the other three left and then finn died and then tristan died and then it was just anya and anya going i need to protect these two shitheads at all costs and one's going like i'm gonna go on sea 
<laughs> and the other one's like, I, I'm, this is weird, dude. Peace. I'm going to do my own thing. You, but that Talos guy you were talking about, tell me more about him. Um, gay? Gay? No. Um, <laughs> so it's that whole, there's just a lot of lore that I've been able to build on from an original story from three years ago, four years ago. And I think that's also what's been really helpful towards this writing process because my goal for campaign three does not take place in this world because i don't know what's going to happen in this world at the end of it i mean uh, we might all die in the next episode so sure like... <laughs> and then it's it's it might have to be something totally different we might have to we might have to use the r word we might have to reboot if everyone's <laughs> gone we might have to do a hard reboot wait when you say Ooh. reboot do you just mean jump 10 years into the future and <laughs> <laughs> jump 10 years and then stop and then uh, and then go five years back but then seven years forward yeah <laughs> and then two years back and then restart it, and then just do a completely different thing make new characters new uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, <laughs> not fucking better um th those guys are playing rock paper scissors they're doing very well um but no i i think maybe out of the npcs i think the most interesting has been uh, the development of Creed and Loki's relationship, the Valdana and Thor relationship, Fuck and then relationship. Fuck shit. <laughs> uh, which I originally intended like the first night. I'm like, oh, she's gonna fuck him. And then they had like this whole thing, and I'm like, I don't think they're gonna fuck. I think they like each other. I was actively trying to make Loki not celibate, but not sexual. Yeah. Like, I, I think I was even like talking with you about it, like, I don't know if I wanna make him do stuff. Cause like that was. <laughs> what Absidy did that yeah. I didn't want to play the same thing and then it just the way that it developed it made sense so I went with it um, and then I think so you're saying you were willing right <laughs> consent I would kiss, verbal consent. consent yeah 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 okay. consent I think uh, I think the Manu Thok relationship is very interesting um, but I think my favorite has so far has been Grace and uh, her wife Rosalie Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Fuck, we need to check on that. <laughs> <laughs> we got some other shit going on. Yeah, because I remember especially you guys were like, I don't know about her. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> She's talking demon talk. And they're like, it's fine. <laughs> do what you're doing, devil lady. <laughs> so, <laughs> did she say that before? No? Oh, that's bad. She just learned it. <laughs> I haven't gotten really to ask a question yet. So, Justin. Yeah, please, Mike. As we're probably getting close to wrapping this up. Probably. Uh, I think I'm going to bring it home. Oh, yeah. Bring it on home to me, Sam Cook. How you feeling about Duke? Oh, man. Uh, Patrick saw the aftermath of Duke. Um, I was going to say, for those that don't know, <laughs> Duke, prior to this campaign, is Justin's baby. That's like the one of the first characters he ever played that he built out that he fell in love with. So, And he played it as as best as a GM can and mm -hmm. um so with Duke it's funny because Finn was my first character Duke was my second I played Duke the longest I I fell in love with this character so much that you know there is a lot of aspects of me that I put into the character and so I had to justify in myself after he died that it wasn't Duke's story anymore Duke Duke ran his course and that's okay because you know i think i i think i pervade it or conveyed it that you know there wasn't any like regret when duke died he was very happy to see thok it obviously ended very bittersweet for thok but there was a a sense of relief that i'm not going to be okay but i think everyone else will be because you're here now and so it, it was definitely hard for me. Um, definitely my favorite character I, I've ever been able to, to play. I love dwarves and I love clerics and he was my, my dwarf, dwarf cleric. He was my ultimate healer, man. I have a whole kit. Uh, then my, my, my follow-up question, which this can just kind of be a, a simple one for you, yeah. is obviously in this world, he is gone. Do you think you'll ever play Duke again? Ooh. I don't know. I, I played him once uh, when I got to play him with Carlos and uh, at uh, Nicole's one shot. Shout out Nikki, Nikki Artsicle. 
uh, I got to play him and it was really cool. It was like putting on an old uh, sweater, like something that you broke in and it was just comfortable. Like, it's kind of like, I'm gonna assume it's gonna be the same kind of reaction when we do that one shot where you guys get to play Rufio Shark and Absy again. Mm -hmm. It's like putting on old fucking pants that you're like, shit, why did I ever stop wearing these? <laughs> it's a great. And then eventually you realize like, oh, I remember why. It's because I grew this and yeah. it's nice to, to reflect, but I'm on to like cooler pants. <laughs> The analogy of these trying Jenko to... jeans. <laughs> no more How bell dare you? <laughs> um, They're coming back. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Making a resurgence. Coming. No. Um, I would love to play them again. I just, if there's an opportunity, I have. The, the curse of being a forever DM is you get to make all these characters and you don't get to play them. So you just put them in the fucking, mm -hmm. you put them in the world. Manu's a character I've always wanted to play. I'm like, fuck it. He's in the thing now. <laughs> Valdana, Creed, all of them are just... I know that it's very uh, frowned upon to make a DM PC. Nah, I like fuck make, that. I'm like making DM PCs, man. They're more fleshed out oh, to yeah, me. Dude. Then if I just had a stat block, I'm like, all right, they're this. <laughs> this is Kyle. <laughs> Fucking hates drywall. Loves <laughs> monster energy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I still need to make the way of the Kyle, the path of the Kyle monk. I really <laughs> need to. I need to sit down. Are you someone's stepdad? You get to attack him at advantage. Yes, she does. He gets advantage on drywall and on uh, stepdads. That's what his motivation is. He learned how to become the Kyle when his mom remarried to that fucking loser Mark. But Mark shows up, dude. No. Mark shows up. But it's just like always a reminder of the fact that he's not. What I didn't have. Not my real dad, and that's my goal. Okay, so yeah. like Mike said, I feel like we're winding down. So I want to end the podcast Yay. light with um, kind of a, a one a one sentence goal for your character in our next forty episodes. However long it takes us before we get another podcast, what's your what's your character's motivation? You know, just kind of sum it up in a in a phrase or um, something like that. And we'll start with Josh. Oh, fuck you. I was um, going to say do it in reverse al alphabetical order by character. That's so confusing. You're Thor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go first. I'll go first. <laughs> You're the leader. Fuck you. <laughs> You're in charge right now. I you do it. it. Uh, so I would say Thor's motivation moving forward is just going to be um, bring me Thanos. Um, he wants to go handle business with Flevlog and, and Enya, and he is hella motivated to, to bring the wrath of the God of Thunder and the newly crowned self-king of Asgard uh, upon them. It's a pretty long sentence, but... I think... For Loki, it's... He wants to redeem himself in his own eyes. He's, he's a new Loki, and he wants to... Whether or not other people think he needs to, which I'm sure they do, he wants to atone for his past self. But not, not to or for the other people, just to and for himself. And become the Loki he now knows he should be. Alder Sorry, I was waiting for the card to pass. <laughs> um, he is in a state of desperation for clarity. That's really what he, he needs the most right now, is clarity on what the fuck is going on at home. And, like, Justin obviously dropped a little bit of golden nuggets. Uh, Did I? <laughs> tonight as to the fact that yes, drop the golden <laughs> nuggets um, in regards to I, I might be surprised when we go home when we go back to his home to see what's there um, but I, I just need clarity as to what, he, what, what his motivations really are going to be going forward because right now he's, he's along for the ride but he, he needs to know what his home is like right now in order to really have an idea of what to do going forward. And until Justin stops fucking with me on that, I, you know, that's 
something that's going to be perpetually in the back of his head because he feels it watching him. Literally, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Where do I see the Fox story going next? Um, now, after this current quote unquote arc has began, um, I see part of him wanting to explore and grow the uh, the relationship with Tibrin for sure. Um, another thing I see potentially is now that he has somehow created Eclipse with the two weapons, how, what this means with his connection with Pelor, see if there's a stronger connection to see if that helps his god uh, become more on the level that he used to be um he's very intrigued about the fact that pillar doesn't currently have an avatar um can't say whether or not that could be for Thok's future but you know it's a possibility there's some pros there's some cons because obviously the last avatar is currently hasn't been able to move on they kind of been a weird life and death limbo area protecting what they need to protect so so yeah so aside from exploring his relationship with both his boyfriend and both his god um also trying to help manu whether or not that means giving him a new finding him a new body or some way to make him corporeal again um being able to get rid of um <laughs> yami by manu um the dark menu, death menu, um, Emohotep, Emotep? I don't remember what Justin called him. Yeah, that one. Um, once we get rid of him and see if we can put my new soul back in his body or whatever that comes to be, that is also another part of, I feel like, his step. Um, he's honestly kind of just excited that he's been reconnected with the ship. Um, I don't know how much longer we're going to stay with it, but we'll see. We're going to have to stay tuned and find out. What about you, buddy? Uh, I was trying to find a nice quote. The life of the wife was, uh, is ended by the knife. I believe it was the great band uh, Chumbawamba that once said, you get knocked down and you get back up again, you're never going to keep us down. <laughs> Blessed be. No. <laughs> um, I'm going to go from the heart. Um, what I want for the next 40 episodes. Um, I want... Blood. 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 I want there to be a clear threat and I want there to be a preparation um, and I'm interested to see what that result is going to be because I think it's beyond all four of your characters and it just hasn't been revealed yet. I have to be on. That would have been a really cool quote if it wasn't for the guy screaming in the background. <laughs> no, that might not get picked up. I can cut it out. No, that's that's what I want. I want there there are things that are at work that have been at work since you guys first broke out of Starboard that are beyond your godly scopes. What about mm. my druidic scopes? Oh, no. There's Roll a nature check. Let me tell you. <laughs> Actually, dude, you already know it, man. You've been, been here the whole time. Just talk to a tree, you fucking loser. <laughs> fucking idiot. Wait until you start talking to trees, man. I got tree voices. <laughs> Yo, what's Fuck up? you. Yo, what's up? I'm Stan. What's going on, dude? Stan, I'm a spur. Hey, hey, what's your name? Hey, 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 what's your name? Yeah. What? No. Fuck you. <laughs> hey, fuck you. No, fuck hey. you. <laughs> All right, well, let's leave it on that, on the big old fuck you around the table. I'll tell Sounds you off, uh, off podcast who uh, Enya looks like and who I've modeled Enya off of. Is Mark Wahlberg. Why? Who told you? <laughs> what? It's actually not Mark no, Wahlberg. It's Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Guys, I said let's leave it at that. Guys, thank Sam you. Jackson. 
for listening and hanging out with us this evening as we hung out with one another. Um, like, person. comment, subscribe if you can do that on whatever you're listening to this on. Your podcatcher of choice. Yeah, and uh, we will see you guys next time. So long. Bye.